Yes. All right, we're recording. Okay, so good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy. Today, with the physician, and uh, we were going to have um, Dr. Irene Luck for us to oh, discuss. Luke, just, look, <laughs> look, okay. Irene, look. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Irene, look. She will be with us today to discuss more about herself, introduce herself. And she is the first winner of the Telehealth 10K, and we'll get to know more about her. So before that, um, I'm Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy. I'm the owner and CEO founder of Fishigen PT and Wellness, and also the creator and founder and of balance and fall support group in aging adults we always discuss every thursday so thanks god it's thursday a very <clears throat> good and great physical therapist in our field and we have dr irene look today all right oh, so yes. thank you so much good morning yeah. irene all right good morning. anything else thank you so much for for your time with us and here with us, um, just tell us about yourself and introduce yourself more about, uh, and then also your practice. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thanks for having me. It's really great to be here. Um, and so nice uh, meeting you and hearing more about what you do. Um, I practice outside of, um, in Eastern Washington, just outside of Spokane, um, about two hours away from it in a small town. Um, it's about, well, medium-sized town. It's 300,000 people. And I moved my practice out here from St. Louis. So I did a lot of my, uh, you know, most of my practice, all of my practice in St. Louis, and then um, came out here about a year and a half ago. So my uh, specialty area is in chronic pain and orthopedics. Uh, I started out with getting my orthopedic specialization and then went on to study more in applied neuroscience and got my therapeutic pain specialist certification through um, evidence um, in motion and oh, uh, International Pain and Spine Institute. Um, so that's what I've been primarily working in for the last, um, I would say, five to seven years is chronic pain and combining an approach where I use neuroscience with physical therapy, orthopedics, and how do we calm the brain down um, after such a long time of fight or flight. So I also treat mood disorders, anxiety, depression, um, as well as memory focus, and brain injury, strokes, things like that. So I've kind of blended both orthopedic and uh, yeah. neurology. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It, yeah. I'm saying when you say like orthopedic and then it's more on now pain management. That's really interesting. So you did your pain management course in EIM. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really good. And then neuroscience. So that's why you have more neuro like stroke, Parkinson's. So you're a movement. Yeah, so neuroscience is kind of how the well I I studied with um just uh, just various psychology courses that allow us to understand the brain better. So knowing the brain and how it works can actually help people learn to train the brain. So um, I don't just learn about um, maybe like the, the diseases of the brain, but actually mm -hmm. how to change the brain using neuroplasticity, which is a lot like, you know, what most neurotherapists have to do. Yes. Um, I just learn different techniques to manage the pain, which is different than teaching someone how to walk. But I, I combine, um, you know, I talk to OTs, I talk to speech, I talk to counselors. So my program is really comprehensive. I take parts from every different practice that I, you know, different discipline that I talk to. And then I combine that to make a holistic program. That's really interesting. Yeah, 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 that's really good. That's really good. I remember yeah. that um, I watched the library at one point and you taught the um, one of your clients like uh, deep breathing exercises. So we'll discuss yeah. more about that. Yeah, um, so what is your philosophy in life? So, so my philosophy, especially as I've been practicing, well, in general, is that I feel everyone has a story to tell and everyone deserves to have a chance to tell their story. I feel that people in pain come from a lot of different backgrounds, 
a lot of, they have a story to tell, but their body is what's telling the story. Mm -hmm. But their mind is often caught up in a lot of trauma or pain from the past. And we want to be able to let that come out in different ways. And I feel that treating with, treating everyone with patience, compassion, mm -hmm. Um, not judging is really important. Wow. I think that in our society, we judge ourselves harder than we even judge other people. So I feel that it starts with being very uh, aware of your own body, mm -hmm. aware of your own needs. I focus a lot on when I used to uh, have more students in the clinic, just the idea of self-care as practitioners. Mm -hmm. um, but then also just as people, we, I think we run ourselves so hard and we don't usually think about what we need until we are already desperate for it. So how that fits That's into true. the neuroscience idea is that when our bodies are in fight or flight, it takes mm -hmm. so long for us to calm down. But if we can keep ourselves from going into fight or flight as much, then we can really achieve uh, good health. So for me, it is that to not push myself to the limit, but to really look at strategies to make sure that I don't go into fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And that means taking care of trauma, taking care of myself, taking care of um, learning how to grow in all aspects of my life, emotionally, spiritually, physically, so that I can be as healthy as possible and balanced. Yeah, so that's my yeah. thought. That's really good. It's really like a wellness thing, right? You don't, that's yeah, really, yeah. This is like direct therapy. Even us, we need you. Yeah. <laughs> Fight and flight, stress, yeah. stress yeah. management, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With yeah. all these physical exactly. therapists having this documentation thing, stress management, yeah. life and balance. Yeah. So that's really interesting. So of all, you have a great skills and then also courses. Of all the skills that you got or the courses that you did, um, any recommendations that you think um, really influence you a lot? You, yeah, you I feel like my main influence, the, the start of my program that I developed, the foundation of it was from the Evidence in Motion mm -hmm. International Pain and Spine Institute course on uh, well, the certification on uh, for therapeutic pain. Um, and so their course is amazing. Adrian Lau is the one that developed it. Um, his last name is spelled L-O-U-W. And him and his team oh. are amazing. They What I liked about it is that they really focused on the patient and listening to their story. So it, it just worked so well with my philosophy of life. And then they have the scientific evidence-based practice to go behind it. So it is a great foundation for anyone who treats chronic pain or is interested in that. Um, it's a tough population. You know, these people are often uh, needing help and they've been very, very much hopeless for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to instill hope, but you also have to know what you're doing on a physical level to help them. Yes. Uh, and you have to be really patient. And so this program that I did through EIM and through International Pain and Spine Institute combines all of those things. I've, I learned so much from it. That's really good. Yeah, that's the pain management, right? That's yeah. the therapeutic mm -hmm. pain management system. Yes. So you become a specialist at the end of it. And yes, then yes. from there, I went on to add on a lot more holistic treatments. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do something that I you well, I, I implement something called polyvagal theory. Yes, it is, yes, um, I that. Yeah, so polyvagal theory is the idea that cranial nerves have an effect on the entire way that our body processes signals. And if you are in pain, if you have any changes in your mood, uh, disorders, um, anxiety, depression, that you can actually use your cranial nerves for treatment as a way to connect your brain and body again. Yeah. So polyvagal theory it has been instrumental in how I treat. And if you watch the videos on the library, you'll mm. see me teaching those exercises and as well as uh, describing and educating patients on them. That's really uh, so, good. Yeah. Really good. That's, um, that's my next question. Um, of all your skills, like um, what is your best skills or what are the things that make you unique to other therapies or unique as a person? Yeah, I feel that of all those skills, I am always learning. So there's so many different ways to approach therapy. Instead of being a specialist, I think of myself as um, 
an information gatherer. So mm -hmm. I look at all these different areas, different disciplines, and then for my patients, I choose I need to know a lot of different areas so that when someone comes to me and they have questions, I can pick the best treatment for them. So okay. um, a specialist often just hones in on one particular process, but when you're treating chronic pain, it is so varied. Every person is so different that I feel that the fact that I can, you know, learn something from um, a psychiatric journal, mm -hmm. and then I could combine it with something from a PT journal, and combine it with something on evolutionary biology. Like mm -hmm. I just love that uh, constant learning. And so that's what's different about me. And, and that's what's different about my program is I take mm -hmm. things like yoga. I take Eastern medicine. I take all okay. of those things. I match it up with what's the Western scientific mm -hmm. philosophy. And so I can use both sides of that. Um, so that everything is grounded, right? But yes, what we're yes. finding in Western medicine is that even in studies that are coming out, that it does prove that some Eastern philosophies, you know, yoga, breathing, meditation, those things uh, really do make a difference. So, that's true. That's so true. I like the combination of both. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Especially the Eastern medicine, we have this more on the dry needling as well. They have this also the yoga and the deep breathing, your Pilates and everything. They really have a benefits of that, of course. Yeah. yeah. What will be the best, Um, let's say, if I will ask you some tips for the balance and fall support group, any yeah. tips that you can give to us, you know, for our members. Yeah. We are members of clinicians and it's um, also a public. So they're always watching on our blogs and also on our articles. So what do you think will be best tip for you? Well, uh, the best tip I can give for anyone who wants to practice their balance is to understand how the brain works in learning. And many of you might already know this, but the brain actually cannot retain information from the body signals after about three hours if you don't repeat it. So I tell people integrate something into your daily routine that's a little bit of a balance exercise, but you wanna do it more often. So if you practice balance and you're just ba balancing 10 minutes to 20 minutes and just exercise in that little chunk, it won't transfer over as well as if you, it will still transfer into your memory, but it will not transfer as well as if, for example, you were standing on one leg while you were yes, cooking like that. Mm -hmm. or, you know, um, brushing your teeth, right? So if you did that every few hours, it's the same with breathing. Breathing actually is um, very fundamental. If you can, learn how to calm your system down, mm -hmm. your body and brain connect. And so you're less likely to um, fall without catching yourself. So the idea that your body and brain can connect as well as possible throughout mm -hmm. the day will help you in those moments where you might trip over something and then you have to catch yourself, your body mm -hmm. and brain can actually do that. All right, that's really good. Yeah. So something new. I didn't know. I just know that we need repetition. Like let's see, I didn't mm -hmm. know the three hours. <laughs> yeah, three yeah. hours. Uh, actually, it's even less than that, but no one likes okay. to hear that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I had to modify it to three hours because actually it's more like one and a half to two, but no one wants to be doing exercises that long. Mm -hmm. So I mean, about three hours, we see a, a, quite a bit more retention. It all mm -hmm. depends on if there's other, you know, conditions that you're dealing with. But for people without any, uh, you know, other conditions that might affect memory, three yes. hours. All but balance, right, that's balance good. Can come back very fast. Yes, I find yes. that to be the case. So yes. yeah, that's why we uh, educate more and we focus more on the balance and falls, knowing that this is all. Uh, it can happen anytime, any day. We just need more education yes. and this yeah. increase the mortality. It's not an only an older adult. So it can begin now the teachings yeah. from aging Absolutely. adult, you know. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Now, congratulations on thank your you. being the grand prize winner of the Telehealth 10K. So congratulations. So tell us more about that. So what is Telehealth yeah. 10K? Yeah, so it is... Uh a competition that's put on by Rob Vining and his particular organization is called Telehealth PT. They have a Facebook group that is a closed group, but everyone is welcome to join. Um, mm -hmm. It's very easy to join if you're a physical therapist. They also are open to OT speech, basically any rehab professional um, 
or even doctors or chiropractors. Uh, oh. Basically, it is a group of just practitioners that are wanting to see how they can implement telehealth into their practice. So the telehealth 10K was a way for everyone to get, get their feet wet, basically. So okay. it was a race to see who could get the first 100 visits of, in tele, in, of telehealth. Uh -huh. um, everyone sets up their own little system okay. and uh, does the recruiting for their own patients. And then mm -hmm. uh, all the contestants just race. It's a three month race. And at the end of it, the person who reached the 100 visits first would get $10,000. Oh, so right. it's a that's like 10K, thing. right? Yes. yes, that's where the 10K came from. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So how do you, um, let's say when you sign up first, and then we'll, maybe we can show them the link later on how to sign up. And then, so how do you prepare for that? Is it really like, do you need to have a knowledge of the telehealth at first or it will go along the way? No, actually, I didn't know much about telehealth. Um, I had done a few consultations over Zoom, which is what we're using for this. Okay. But I didn't have a telehealth practice. Actually, it's for people who want to get creative and how they might reach their patients. And one thought I had for uh, practitioners that might be watching this is if you have a lot of patients that are homebound, mm -hmm. but you want to check in on them, if you want to see their living situation, if you want to see how they might be able to problem solve in their house, mm -hmm. this is a great tool. Uh, okay. For the elderly, there is a little bit of a learning curve, so you will have to be patient and teach them. But mm -hmm. for me, I didn't have a telehealth practice. I wanted to try to set it up, and this was a great opportunity. So um, basically what you do when you uh, enter into the contest is that you get a package that will walk you through setting up okay. your own website, helping you figure out the telehealth components, figuring out how to do telehealth. And then there's all the examples on the telehealth library that show you how you might be able to treat someone. So if you don't know how to treat, but really you're just using your same clinical skills, you may just have to apply it without touching a person. So you just have to get creative. The technology I used for it was basically a Zoom. Okay. Uh, we just signed in on the Zoom, all yeah. right. It's mm -hmm. a Zoom application on my computer. And then um, for the telehealth 10K, there's a lot, a lot more rules to it. But for telehealth itself, it's very, very easy to do. Zoom has an encrypted version that is still free, and it allows you to be able to be HIPAA compliant. So okay. that's okay. so now since the competition, I have been able to continue using my telehealth, but now I charge it. So for the okay. competition, we do all free visits, but now I charge it as part of. Uh, kind of part of my practice they yes. still see me in the office but then I can touch base with them at home okay good so you have an outpatient clinic and then in the to follow up you use the telehealth on top of that right yes, yes. okay <laughs> good good so how do you inform them like the marketing so how do oh, you yes. inform the public? Oh, okay, we will have a telehealth and it's free. I need only 10 people and then you just... Yeah. <laughs> right, so what's nice about the competition is that you can use your own patients that you see in your office for your telehealth visits as well. So okay. that is first, number one, a great tool that you might be able to use. Mm -hmm. If you have your own practice already, if you work in a clinic and you tell everyone that this is what you're doing and everyone can support you, then you can use your own patients that you have in the clinic. They would just have to uh, sign a few different forms, right? Not just your clinic forms, but then you could use those patients for telehealth and really experiment with seeing if you can make a difference to touch base with them at home and in the clinic as well. So that's number one that you can start uh, marketing to your own patients, then also any other therapists or practitioners that you know and are connected to, they might refer to you for telehealth. So I found that for me, marketing was more face-to-face. Uh, -face. I didn't do any, I did one one uh, Facebook post about it, and I may have gotten one or two responses, but I didn't do any Facebook ads. I didn't do any Google ads. I didn't do anything that I paid for media, you know, like some people pay for newspaper ads or television ads. I just went and spent about one month mm -hmm. setting up my system and then also going out and talking to people. So I just, I, yeah, I hit the pavement and I just, I love building community. That's just part of who I am. I like going yes. out there 
and connecting people together. So I would talk to different types of people, not just PTs. I would talk to um, massage therapists. Yes, I would talk yes. to yoga instructors. I would talk to personal trainers. I would let everyone know in the community and then they would tell their friends and family and then they would come and sign up. So right. it was, um, it was a good, it was a good connecting uh, opportunity for, for me to get out there and just meet more people. Yeah, that's really good because it's, it will be like a basic knowledge and give you a step by step. Um, and then you're going to put your foot there and then later yeah. on learning curve, as you've said. So um, what will be your biggest challenge? So, and then what are the majority of your cases there? Is it like more on masculine skill style and what you're having mm -hmm. now, like neuroscience? Yes, correct. So my videos on that library would be mostly my chronic pain. I have quite a few of those, but the majority is musculoskeletal. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people who had, it's really good. Telehealth is really good if you have to screen someone to see if you need to see them in clinic. Some mm -hmm. people actually do very well if you give them an exercise program and then they can solve it on their own. So there are a few people that had some aches and pains. I saw them twice. I, you know, did my evaluation, screened them, and then gave them an exercise program and they didn't need much more. Some people I actually saw for up to 10 visits. Okay. And I, mm -hmm. uh, so you have, you can see it as many or the same person as many times for the competition. So that, like you said earlier, you mm -hmm. only need 10 people if yeah. you can see 10 times. So obviously yes, yes. you want to use your judgment and make sure that you're not abusing your practice act, right? So mm -hmm. only treat appropriately. But I had some chronic pain patients that I saw for 10 visits because they really needed that care. And mm -hmm. uh, it, was a, it was a good adventure for me to learn how to clinically work with them. But pain neuroscience education works really well on telehealth because a lot of it is talking to them, hearing their story and educating them, and then showing them how to do their own um, like self-massage self or self-calming mm -hmm. techniques. Um, how to help them understand how their body's working. So that works really well for telehealth. So anyone mm -hmm. that does chronic pain or sees more people in that field will do well. Anyone that does ortho, anyone that does geriatrics, I think would also do well because yeah, if they have so some, some ability to go into their living environment and see how they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. can show you what they're struggling with and you can see it. It's almost like you're a home health therapist, but you get yes. to stay at home. <laughs> yeah, and so my challenge for that is because um, they are geriatric, so the technology, so they need a caregiver yeah. to set it up for them, or are they yeah. asking you what's the best time? So how that, does it go, a challenge if it is geri or geriatric? Yeah, so I'm finding that um, probably the cutoff for the learning curve where it was very most people up to the age of 60 to 65 did great. And then after that, they really needed like a, a one of their family members or friends to help them. Okay. So um, I had people that were much, yeah, to help them set up, but it wasn't, it didn't seem that hard. People who really wanted to do it already had people to help them. Mm -hmm. So I would just email, for example, someone's daughter instead of them yes. because they didn't really like to check their email. And then the daughter set it, set up the app on their phone and mm -hmm. taught them how to use it. Mm -hmm. And then it, I, I, they would just press the buttons and, 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 and be it. there. So it's very easy. Okay. Zoom is just, you press the link and then it mm -hmm. just shows up. Yes. And then if there was any problems, I would always just call them on the phone and walk them through it. There were a few times that were uh, you know, you just need a lot of patience, some technical difficulties. Okay. Uh, you know, when things go wrong for someone who is older, they don't really have the ability to problem solve. So you just mm -hmm. have to walk them through it because they're just not used to the technology. Yes. So I, I just was patient and, um, yeah. And if they had people in their house that could help them, That's that was good. really helpful. Yeah. So how do you document just pa paper and pen just for that? Yeah, so for that competition, I just use paper yes. and pen because I like okay. to write while I'm talking to them. And then for my uh, clients now that I, that I just write, I still write it in paper and pen. Oh, no, I, sorry. I write it in Google Docs okay. and then I cut and paste it into our actual note system when I get back to the office. So I write sure. everything mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time and then I cut and paste when I get back. Oh, okay. So we have our, our documentation system, but I don't have that at home with me. Mm -hmm. So I Google Docs uh, is, if you are not charging insurance, is 
appropriate for note taking. So it's not fully HIPAA compliant. So you have to be careful if you're going to use insurance for telehealth. But for me, I just charge cash for it. So it's okay. part of our cash practice. And so I have a lot more leeway when they sign their waiver. They understand that we try to be as HIPAA compliant as possible, but they understand in the waiver that I will be putting their notes into Google Docs. And it, I, I think most people would say that it's pretty secure. It's mm -hmm. not encrypted, but you still need a password to get in. So it's not like a Word document where if someone stole your computer, they could yes. find it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's a lot less... Um, stringent if you're not doing insurance uh, reimbursement. And if you're doing cash-based, you just want to be careful. And that's what I usually use. It's Google really Doc. Good. Yeah, that's really good. And then also it's a benefit for the client and you as well, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm more in concierge physical therapist, so I would travel at home and then this will be a really good tool in addition to yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. So how do you charge? Is it like 30 or an hour or a 45 minutes? How is it? There's so a I just do, for you? yeah, so I do packages. I do 30 minutes mm -hmm. uh, sessions. I okay. try to keep it short uh, for a reason because I think of it more as supplement. I think of seeing them in the clinic is still one of the most important things if possible. If people want to do an hour, I will give them a, a discount. But uh -huh. usually I do a package of five visits and I do 30 minutes for each visit. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to buy the package and the package is normally about $200. But um, for an intro rate, I'll do 175. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's pretty fair. It's about $35 for 30 minutes. I feel like most people would pay that for a massage. So mm -hmm. for, um, you know, if for the intro rate, I, I'm giving them a discount. Um, and it seems to work out well because people will pay, like we'll still see them in clinic and they use their insurance, yes. but um, they'll still pay on top of what they, they get in clinic because it's a, a reasonable price. And so they'll, mm -hmm. once they buy the five visits, if they use it all great, if they don't, then, at least we already have, um, that's how we make a profit is that they, instead of just buying one at a time, they buy the five. That's really good. It's affordable. So it varies on the state as well. So the different yeah. clinicians can do their own packages and it depends on the case that they're handling, yeah. right? So yeah, exactly. it doesn't really need to be the same. And also what's your biggest test or like um, diagnostic tool when you're doing and seeing the client? So I saw one of Ichis has the knee problem in the library. Mm -hmm. So you do a full deep squat. So, so yeah. what are the, some of the, tools or diagnostic tests that we can do and then most probably that's some uh, last two questions I'm handing. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Um so I like to use anything in the in our clinical toolkit, you know, same with any uh, clinicians that have experience that uses your eyes. So gait, analyzing gait is and posture is really important. Um, being able to do anything functional and watching how they move. So it's very different because you have to use your eyes versus your hands. And if you're a manual therapist, uh, you know, you have to change the, your perspective. So for example, I, even when I'm teaching exercises, I would have the patient touch their own knee or their own hip or their own shoulder. And they, you have to educate the patient to be your eyes and hands for you mm -hmm. <laughs> in some ways, but you are seeing what they're doing and yes. you're putting them through it. So it, those are my biggest tools. You're actually, the biggest tool really is the patient themselves. Okay. If you need to palpate, they uh -huh. need to palpate for you, right? If their knee is hurting, you say, can you touch on the inside? Describe how that feels. Um, to go ahead and touch your neck. How does that feel? Um, you're having them use a lot of different describing mm -hmm. words. They mm -hmm. actually are treating themselves mm -hmm. as well as you educating them. And I find that Good once they know. learn to treat themselves, they don't need to rely on you as much. And the, I would say that the way that the number of visits it takes to get better is about the same as what it would be in the clinic. There's no uh, disadvantage to not being able to touch them. Okay. Certain patients that they you do need to touch them, you know, and actually have be hands on. I would say bring them into the clinic at least for once or twice. Okay. But the kind of visualization assessment type of mm -hmm. thing, I don't use any um, specific kind of um, I don't know clinical tool to measure or anything. Okay. I know that mm -hmm. there's some systems out there that allow you to measure the angle of the hip 
Okay. I've mm -hmm. never needed to do that. I just compare it to the other side. I see it oh, on okay. camera and I say, oh, that's a lot less and you can eyeball mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not quite as accurate. I would say if then if you use a goniometer, but uh, it's it's still good enough because you're looking at function, right? Yeah. I'm about to Less say about that. Yeah. It's more about function. Function, yes, yes. That's really good. And also the tolerance of the pain level and how many times you can do it. Now it's less uh, less effort and then before more pain. So it's more on how we can objectively note that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's good, yeah. good. So thank you so much. So tell us the link or the telehealth yeah. website. So how can we sign up? Yeah, so I'm going to post a link below that you mm -hmm. can sign up for the telehealth 10K. Um, so that is going to be $299 for the entry fee. That's through okay. Rob Binding's group, Telehealth PT. And uh, with that particular link, you will also get me as one of your coaches to help you set up. Okay. So I get to have one session one-on-one -on -one with whoever uses that link mm -hmm. to help answer any questions personally that they might have. So that's number one. Um, Telehealth PT is that Facebook group that Rob Binding has created. He is amazing. He is one of the kind of um, visionaries for telehealth. If you have any questions about telehealth that, mm -hmm. uh, that he has just answered so many of my own questions. And so he's a great resource. So that's number exactly. two. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to contact me personally to talk about chronic pain or polyvagal theory or some of these more holistic treatments, I work for a clinic. Uh, the name is Therapy Solutions. We're in Tri-Cities, Washington. So if you're in Washington, I would love to hear from you because I love uh, connecting with people in the Washington That's state. Good. Okay. But also my personal email is irene at therapy-solutions.us. And I'll put that in a link below yes, as well. Yes. And you can also find me on Facebook. So Irene Luke, and you could just personal message me. We can so. look on Facebook, Irene Luke. <laughs> Exactly. How yes. about so Instagram? To remember. Yeah. Look, How about your Instagram? Yes. <laughs> mm. Are yeah. you in Instagram as well? Uh, I am, but I don't really use that professionally. Ah, okay. Uh, but mm. our our clinic is on Instagram, so okay. you can. I can provide that link below as well. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, you are, thank you, you for having very me. interesting. Um, uh, cases and we learn a lot from you and we will get to know you more so we will highlight you of one of our Monday highlights and then we will going to uh, post this in one of our thanks God it's Thursday and thank you so much oh, Irene yes thank yes, you. yes our pleasure me. Yes, yes our pleasure you. all uh -huh. right bye for now and happy bye. holidays okay yes, happy holidays. all right thank you so much I'll keep in touch bye for now yep sounds good